And welcome back to WMMBAM.com, keyword video, where we have Brevard Sheriff's candidate on the Republican side, Wayne Ivey, in with us for the bonus interview segment this morning. Wayne, uh, I want to get to some of the questions that I couldn't get to during the show because we took so many calls, but let's talk about your biggest concerns if Mm -hmm. you're elected sheriff. What are your biggest concerns about the job and the department? Uh, as far as the, the job itself, I mean, just the biggest concern becomes the balancing act of all the different things that a sheriff has to do. Uh, I've, I've been very blessed to have those experiences. And, you know, having the knowledge of having worked in each of the different components gives you a, a definite um, hands up and an ability to understand what's taking place. But it's it's a lot more than just being involved in the the uh, law enforcement side of it. You know, you're you're working with the legislative side. You're working with the budgeting. Uh, right, the moment the moment we uh, move into um, our transition is finished, and I become sheriff, we start focusing on that next budget. Uh, we're going to have to be building that budget from the ground floor up, making sure that we're able to provide the layer of service and the level of service that we need for the agency to protect our citizens. And that's going to be um, that's going to be a, a good solid process. That's where I'm going to bring in our um, citizens oversight group that is going to once we get that draft done, I want a citizens oversight group that is going to sit at the table with me, look at our draft budget before we present it, and say mm-hmm. I think we could cut something here, or I think maybe you're cutting yourself short here. I'm going to use expertise of our community to help us build that budget. And quite frankly, when we go down to the county commission to have our budget approved, I want the community surrounding us and sitting in those chairs. All right. Are there <clears throat> uh, some big needs, as you see it, for the sheriff's department right now, things that you think have to be done in order to make this department more efficient, more effective? There, there's definitely some efficient um, uh, mechanisms we can put in place. Um, you know, for, first thing we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to look for those ways to cut waste. We are going to examine every unit, every position, uh, and that, that process has already started. You know, I mean, we're very focused on the campaign right now, but I know in my mind where we can make some of those cuts and, and uh, put them into play. Well, let me ask so, it this way then. Once you've taken a look at that and you're prepared in the office, what gets cut first? Well, when, when you're looking at cutting, um, there, there's two mechanisms that go into play. One, can we cut the way we spend our dollars? Um, are we buying things we don't need to be? That's the first head that, that I'm going to look at. Uh, can we can we maybe contract with with companies that are going to give us a delivery of services um, through a, a, a bidding process that's going to make it better? You can you can easily say, oh, I'm going to uh, you know restrict credit card usage. Well, what you need to do is make sure that the people you have in place that have those credit cards are restricting it themselves. Uh, we shouldn't have to say don't go spend that. Everybody should be on the same mission, and that mission is working to protect our community, but also understanding that part of our job is protecting our taxpayers' dollars. So that's that's one area. There's there's another area that immediately jumps out at me. The consultants report uh, a couple years ago talked about the efficiency of having a courtroom at the jail complex. When you look at the volume of transportation we do, taking inmates to and from court for menial things, hearings, uh, uh, probation hearings, um, you know, an extended suppression hearing, all of those things create transportation costs. They create inherent risk of taking someone outside of a secure facility mm-hmm. and putting it out into the general public. And they also create a waste of services because so many times, as I've learned through talking with our transportation components, they'll take somebody all the way to the courthouse. When they get to the courthouse, the hearing's been postponed or it's been canceled, and so now we're, we're trucking that person all the way back. We establish a jail or a courtroom at the jail using free inmate labor. Let's be honest. We have free inmate labor there. That's a cost savings measure in itself, being able Mm -hmm. to use them to do some of those things. But when we take and establish that courtroom there, we're not only saving the sheriff's office money. We're going to be saving the county money because by establishing a courtroom there, and the judges are behind this 100%. The judges have already talked to me and said, we will support it 100%. The public defender's office and the state attorney's office support it. You're not only talking about saving the sheriff's office money, you're talking about saving those other entities' money as well. So when you look big picture of cost savings, that's a measure that you can help everybody because the public defender assigns somebody there, the state attorney assigns somebody there, and there's a judge assigned there, and that's efficiency in government. It's not driving all over the place to deliver something. All right, very good. Um, Let me ask the question maybe a little bit different way. What's the biggest change that the public will see in the Brevard County Sheriff's Office if you're the sheriff? The, the first change they are going to see is our crime prevention. Um, I have said it from the very beginning, Bill, and I'm going to stick with it um, because I believe it is the true component to lower crime. It is, um, you know, when, when we put a number in the box for our crime rate, that crime has occurred. 
That number doesn't change if we solve the crime. The victim doesn't change if we solve the crime. They are still a victim. So my immediate rollout plan is going to be to emphasize crime prevention, putting, putting uh, more structure in that program, going and delivering services. Uh, if you look back early on, very early on in this, I talked about using social media. Uh, it was it was probably September that I ta- started talking. Let's about Let's hope you do that. it better than the Olympics, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have to. But there's there's not you know social media doesn't reach everybody. Maybe everybody doesn't have Facebook. In fact, I can assure you, everybody doesn't have Facebook. So our system has to in, encompass the delivery components to get out to our senior centers, to get out to our homeowners associations, our civic groups, all of those. And quite frankly, Bill, I've been doing that for the past ten years in Brevard County. I've done close to 500 presentations in Brevard County um, and across the country on crime prevention, getting people. I can't tell you how many doors I go up and knock on and people go, oh, I saw you speak at AARP or I saw you speak at Ascension Church. That's that's aggressive crime prevention. But we also have to understand that we have a great tool, social media. We can get a text message that says sex offender just moved into your neighborhood. We Mm -hmm. can get an email or a tweet or a Facebook post um, uh, by our fans on our Sheriff's Office fan page that says, hey, be mindful. If you live in this geographic area, we've had this, this, and this going on. And then I'm going to take it to another level. For $50 a month, the Sheriff's Office can have their own TV channel. It will impact through Facebook. It will impact through um, uh, the YouTube, and it'll also through Xbox. So through some mechanism, we can deliver to thousands um, our own TV channel. Imagine the ability to do crime prevention information saying tonight at 7 o'clock we are going to have uh, an information setting on our TV channel, the Brevard County Sheriff's Office, that will talk to you about how to protect yourself against identity theft. Being able to do all of the stuff that we want to do through all those channels. That's looking at big picture. Our, our efficiency um, in, in our, our government, it has to be big picture thinking. It can't be just um, uh, saying we're going to change the wattage in a light bulb or lower the temperature of the water got to be big picture thinking how do we not only cut costs but can we generate revenue through? you know our, our our patrol log sheet that we kept in our cruisers when i was working the streets at the top of it said think crime prevention mm-hmm. it was a phrase i don't know that anybody actually thought it as much as if we were too busy responding call to call but uh, that that's an interesting I, distinction I, I think it every day i think that if i can keep you from becoming a victim we've done our job uh, let's talk about the admin staff at the sheriff's mm-hmm. office, and, and what do you envision in a Wayne Ivey administration there? Uh, as far as the structure of it, Bill? Structure, uh, number of personnel, are, are we top-heavy? We've heard that report. Well, you know, you know, I don't know. Well, here, here's the, the reality of it. Um, there's, there's all sorts of speculation out there, but here's the reality. The reality is this. Um, the state recommends that you operate at 5% of your staffing is exempt positions. Mm-hmm. Those exempt positions are identified by the sheriff, and put into play by the sheriff. Our sheriff's office, as it sits today, operates at 2.6% exempt position. So we're operating just over half of what the state recommends, which I, I'm very proud of. When you also consider, Does that leave a deficiency, or is it operating pretty well? I, I think it's operating pretty well. I think through attrition, we can maybe bring that down even more. Okay. Um, but I think our delivery of services is what you have to look at. And again, I'll go back to I knock on doors every day. And I ask people, when I knock on their door, I ask them, how good a job do you think our sheriff's office is doing? You know what, Bill? 99.9% of the people love our sheriff's office. They think mm-hmm. they're doing a great job. Mm-hmm. And I want to turn it to efficiency for a minute. Our sheriff's office is the lowest cost operating agency per capita in central Florida. Now, when we look at that, when we look at Osceola, Orange County, Seminole County, all of them operating at a higher taxpayer cost than our sheriff's office is operating at, I think we have to consider at this point, if it's not broke, let's not fix it. Now, can we, can we change some things? Certainly. The command structure, the, the structure itself will not look like it does today. I have a different picture for that. I have mm-hmm. a, a, a tearing down. As any new it, sheriff coming in would Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it, that doesn't speak to people. It speaks to the structure, the, right. the rank structure. Sure. Um, I believe that our, our biggest focus is we have to make sure that we have one agency operating across the board and not six different agencies operating as precincts. And that's, that's one of the first things I'll put focus on as well. What's the most valuable experience in your law enforcement career that lends to you being a good sheriff? Uh, having the opportunity to be on the Bill Mix show. Um, Absolutely. That's the best answer I've ever heard. <laughs> um, the, the reality of it is uh, having, having sat in all the different seats. Uh, you know, I said it before. I, I did not want to start my career as a corrections uh, deputy. I did not. 
But when I look back, you know, your career, you don't shape your career. Your career shapes you. Having the opportunity to serve as a corrections deputy, a patrol deputy, an investigator in all the different capacities, having the blessing to have been a special agent and work in a statewide perspective, having the blessing of being able to uh, be the resident agent in charge, having the blessing of having created three programs that were named the most innovative programs in the country, and then getting to bring to the table not just one dimension, not just saying, I've worked here for this long, and so therefore I, I know what goes on. I've worked inside the sheriff's offices. I've worked inside the state. I've worked outside the state. And I've also had the opportunity to bring all of those experiences together, looking at best practice scenarios that we can now use their experience, their, their successes, their failures, to make sure we steer this ship exactly where it needs to go. Question I was going to get into on the air and with the calls that we took, didn't have time. Uh, discipline files have come into play in recent weeks in this race. Let's talk about yours. Let's talk about your opponents. Okay. Uh, my discipline file. Uh, my discipline file, uh, I found out just recently, shows you how old I'm getting because I don't even remember this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I was 18 years old working for the Clay County Sheriff's Office, I apparently lost the jail keys for 15 minutes and uh, was given a, a written reprimand for that, as I should have been. Uh, but um, other than that, I've had a uh, written reprimand with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for um, not paying my cell phone bill on time. I paid it, it just wasn't paid on time. But uh, other than that, I've, uh, I've been very blessed to have a, a rich career. Uh, I was the Special Agent of the Year for the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. I was uh, named the Commissioner's, given the Commissioner's Award for contributions to criminal justice um, throughout the state of Florida. I was named the Marjorie Young Leadership Award from the National Organization of Victims Advocates for my work with Victims Advocacy, and then um, uh, had the opportunity to go to the National Academy. So, you know, when I look at my discipline file, I, I know how aggressive I've been. I, I think to myself, man, um, you know, I, I um, didn't realize even the 18-year-old thing was in there when, um, when I was 18 years old. So, Okay, let's go to your opponent's record discipline-wise. It's public record. It's been out now. Mm -hmm. We've got folks who are, are looking at that, and, and in all honesty, they're kind of appalled at times at what they see. Give me your thoughts on that and how it's been handled by your well, – not asking you to comment on the, on the campaign, but – there's a difference in these files well th there certainly is and um you know the battery of of a woman is is always upsetting and concerning to me and i think to others but bill i i'm gonna i'm gonna stick with what i said from the very beginning i've my my entire mission our team's entire mission has been to tell people why we believe we're the most qualified candidate for the job not why someone else may not be qualified we believe that we are the most qualified we believe that uh, my experiences give me the opportunity to serve as this sheriff and do a great job and continue on the path we're on. And so I'm, I'm going to stay very focused on my delivery of uh, what's, uh, what I believe is the next thing that this sheriff's office needs to do. And, uh, you know, Todd, Todd can answer those questions for himself. Uh, I, I just I, I want to keep a very positive and clean campaign. Folks want more information on the Wayne Ivy campaign. Where do they go? Uh, ElectWayneIvy.com uh, is uh, just a, a wealth of information that shows all of our endorsements. Uh, from from everyone, from our deputies to our community leaders to uh, across the board, and then uh, also uh, you can call me on my cell phone three two one two seven one six zero two nine. I see you cringe every time I give my cell phone out. I feel like Todd Davis from LifeLock giving out his social security number. <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, and then um, you can also go to our Facebook fan page. All right, very good. Wayne Ivy, thanks for the extra time today. Yeah. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. And thanks, thanks for having Thanks to those me. of you for joining us at WMMBAM.com. Keyword video, more candidate interviews coming right here. Keep your eyes on this page. Of course, we'll see you back here live during Bill Mick Live. So have a great day, everybody.